Hi everybody, I am back with another video and today I wanna to talk about highlighting and contouring, but I wanna go back to the basics. So if you're interested, then just keep watching. All right, so I wanna go back to the basics in relation to contouring and highlighting on mature skin. So if you're in my age group, 50 plus, I think that you might find this a little bit interesting. So there are so many ways to contour and highlight and some are dramatic, but in this video, I wanna talk about the basics, why you might want to choose to do a particular uh, technique or why you might want to omit it. So this video is gonna be kind of long. So if you need to get your popcorn, I will have timestamps below just in case you want to skip around. So in my opinion, contouring and highlighting for the mature woman, I think that this is like the most anti-aging <laughs> technique that you can do because you can add dimension, you can add light, you can lift, you can set back, you can do all types of tricks if you do it the correct way. So first up, before you contour and highlight and you start anything, a lot of you all already know, it's important to start with a clean canvas. Cleanse your face, uh, use a really good moisturizer, and you always want to pick a cleanser or a moisturizer that is specifically uh, targeted for your needs. So what do I mean by that? If you have dry skin, you want to pick a more hydrating or moisturizing formula. If you have very oily skin, you still want the hydration, but you probably wouldn't want as much hydration as the person that has dry skin. So those are things that you really want to look at. So since mature skin tends to be a little bit on the drier side, uh, tends to have a little bit more texture, more fine lines, things of such, you, you wanna pick your products appropriately. And if you do have mature skin, creams would be your best bet. And the reason that you probably wanna stick with creams as opposed to powders if you have mature skin is because the powders tend to settle in fine lines a little bit more and they are less forgiving. So that's something to consider. Another thing that you really have to pay attention to is how well products play together. Some products, they will cause a foundation to separate or lift or ball up or beat up. You always want to try to pick products that play well together. And that's from your creams, your serums, your foundation, your powders, everything. You do want to kind of test those out. And you might say, well, how can I do that? Sephora is a place that you can get samples. So you can definitely, you know, try a particular product out, test it out for a little bit, see how it reacts. And then you can move on from there. The next thing you want to really pay close attention to after you have your base already, you need to decide what type of tools you will use. There's quite a few tools. So I've seen some people use their hands when they contour and highlight. I've seen people use sponges. I've seen people use stippling brushes. I've seen people use just a regular foundation brush. So if you use a synthetic brush, these are gonna be the type of tools that soak up the least amount of product. I find that the stippling brushes, the synthetic stippling brushes blend very well and you're not going to waste a lot of product. So there's also using a damp sponge. These are going to blend more if you are using a product and you have it all applied and you feel as though you have a little bit too much and you just kind of want to take a little bit of it up, you could uh, blend it out with a sponge and that would absorb a little bit of the product. And then you have a regular foundation brush. This again, to me, is something that's going to blend in really, really well. So, so if you do elect to use a brush, I always pick one that is very soft, uh, something that has a lot of give. The, don't pick a brush that in my opinion, when you get ready to blend, it's dense. And let me find one. So in my opinion, when you get ready to blend out your contour and your highlighting your foundation, foundation, don't pick a brush that's dense. I don't know if you can see that, but that had this brush, the stippling brush has a lot more give. It's not as dense as this one. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're picking tools and you're blending out your product. So when you're picking your products, there are different types of products that you can highlight and contour with. So you have a traditional 
stick form, which is like this. They also have cream products that come in a pot like this. So you can definitely use something like this. And they also have face palettes. Now to me, a face palette would be good for someone who just wants one product to be able to do multiple things. And for example, I have the Makeup Forever face palette. This is it. So if you're a woman that's on the go, let's say you travel a lot or you gotta get your makeup on lickety split, this is a good one to try. It has a contour shade, it's got highlight, and you can also mix and match to go ahead and get the shade, your perfect shade. By the way, I love these creams. I feel as though these creams are very forgiving. They are very blendable, and you don't necessarily have to set them with a powder. You could use a setting spray. They're not very um, emollient, and you know that could be a bad or good thing, but to me, I find that to be a really good thing because if it's just too, too emollient, too, too much slip, um, it can kind of force you to use a powder where you may not want to. But yeah, this would be another option. And then the last option is a powder, okay? And let's see, I've got some powders here. And here is a bronzer, okay? This is a bronzer powder. And I also have a powder highlighter. So before I get into talking about the technique of contouring, I have to warn you that sometimes contouring the wrong way can be to your detriment. If you already have hollow temples or it's very chiseled right here uh, where your cheeks are and then you go in and you contour even more and deepen it up more, that can aid you as opposed to making you have a more youthful look. So in order to have the best effect, whenever contouring or highlighting, just go up one to two shades. Now, when you see the demo in this video, you might be like, Bridget, I think you went up more than one or two shades. For some reason, the, the, uh, the image is a little bit deeper, you know, as from what I'm seeing, as opposed to what you're seeing. <clears throat> but remember, only one to two shades. That's all that is needed, especially if you're going for a more natural, youthful look. So after you have all of your makeup and you have it applied, you want to test it out to see how it looks. Go outside in natural lighting and take pictures. Even with your forward facing camera, you need to take it in different angles. See what it looks like outside. See what it looks like inside. If you have a makeup light, take it take pictures like that and ask others how well it looks. One thing that I like to do to just kind of test to see how a made up makeup product looks on my face, I have, you know how you have the magnifying mirror? I will get the mirror and I will put it right there and <laughs> I will look. And that's like the ultimate test. So if you're, let's say you're someone that likes to wear makeup every day to work and you've tested your makeup and, and, and you've looked at it in the mirror, you can see you're actually magnifying and you can see what others will see. You never want to pile it on. This is all about subtlety. You know, you just want to apply a little, but most importantly, check it to see how you look before you walk out of that door. So once you start applying your contour, you always want to start it back here, okay? You want this part to be the most heavily um, applied part, and then you want to lightly bring it down. And that's how you want to do your application. Remember, use a stippling brush or a makeup brush. Stippling brushes tend to blend out a little bit better. If you don't feel like using a stippling brush, you can definitely use a sponge. But you always want to start off back here and then work your way forward. So next is the jawline. And this is always uh, good to contour if you're trying to uh, get a more slimming look. Or let's say you, you have a little bit you know, kind of some jaws that are hanging down. You can contour right along here and then shade it in a little bit under your uh, chin just to have a shadow, okay? Make sure you have it blended in very well and make it come right along here, okay? And you do that on both sides. And you just blend it out and that will give you a more chiseled look. When you bring the contour up over your on your forehead, 
you kind of want to use that a little bit uh, a more of a lighter hand uh, because you don't want a really toasted look you're just trying to lightly contour we're just trying to give uh, a light face lift effect so definitely blend this out really well and you don't have to put on as much on your forehead so if you have small thin lips you can have a more pouted look if you just put your contour right here okay right there and then blend that out really well and you really don't have to overdo it in fact you know, once you apply it, you'll even notice when once you take your pictures, you'll notice that it will kind of give you a more pouted look and just make sure you blend that out very, very well. All right, so here you can see me nose contouring and I typically don't do that. If you have been rocking with me for a hot minute, you already know I don't do that. Some women like to contour their nose. Some women, um, they do not. And you'll notice that with my uh, contouring, I'm kind of going t like in towards uh, to make a V. And that's because I have a hump in my nose on the side. But you take your if you do decide to contour your nose, you always want to start it from here where your brows are and then bring it in and come down. That's how you want to do that. And remember all of this contouring you're going to, if you're going to wear foundation or a tinted moisturizer, all that is going to be blended in with this or on top of this. And you'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. So right now the nose contour does look really harsh, <laughs> but you'll see it will get blended out. In fact, the, the look that I have now is the look that you're actually seeing uh, as we speak. But some people would argue that if you have mature skin, just leave the nose contour alone. But I know that some people, they like to do it. I typically yeah. do not. Next up, I want to talk about highlighting. And some people like highlighting, some people don't. I feel as though the type of highlight that I have like now and that I'm showing you, this is a more, uh, it gives you more of a glowy look as opposed to a highlighter, a highlighting look. Um, and creams always work best. Either creams or uh, liquids typically work best with mature skin, especially if you're going to highlight and you don't want to highlight over pores or uh, blemishes because wherever you highlight that is the part that's going to bring forward but wherever you want enhance whatever part you want glow so as you can see i have it on my cheekbones i have a little bit on my forehead i got it on my nose sometimes i put it on my cupid's bow it's wherever you feel like you want to add volume or you want the light to hit or you want to be more glowy. So right now I'm going to go ahead and conceal my under eye. And when you're concealing your under eye and you have dark lines and puffy um, bags like I do, you want to use very minimal product. And as you can see, I'm basically filling in uh, above the puffy line. And I'm just basically taking a brush and blending that out. After I have all of that blend out, I go with a little bit lighter shade and go back in and trace it where the dark line is. What that's going to do is it's bringing the illusion that that dark line that sunk in, it's bringing it forward. So that is the best way to conceal any puffy eyes, any dark eyes or dark lines that you have. And I would advise that whenever you are concealing and um, uh, working your magic with your eyes, use a magnifying mirror and only use a little bit. And when you use the brush, I don't know, let's see, use a pencil, a very, a very small pencil brush like this. Use a type of brush where you can actually you know, pretty much trace the dark line. Okay. Cause that's basically you're filling in the lines. And then after that, you're tracing around the line. After you have all of that trace, if you do not have, or if you are not using a self setting concealer, go ahead and set it with powder, but just a little bit, whatever powder you use, I do recommend using something that is finely milled and something that has a smoothing effect. I'll give you some examples down below, but like right here on my vanity, I have uh, the 
the powder by Beauty Blender and there was another powder that I had by Sephora their micro finishing powder. There's so many powders out there but you want to use something that has a smoothing effect and you only want to use a little and the way that you know how much you're using is to get right in there and use that magnifying mirror. You really want to go back in with your stippling brush and blend it in. You really want to take time to blend it in. Almost blend until you feel as though you're blending it away. Because remember, you, you hear a lot of people saying less is more, less is more. When it comes to mature skin and you uh, sculpting your skin, less is truly more. Blend and blend with your stippling brush. Go back in with your sponge, um, a damp sponge, and you know blend it out. Make sure you have evened it out really well. After you've done that, you can go in with a foundation and just kind of fill in the parts where needed. For example, on my forehead, I feel as though that skin up there is pretty much even. Doesn't have a lot of texture. So I did apply foundation, but I didn't apply that that much I only applied a little right along here okay I applied a little bit more foundation because I got the dark the darker chin and then right up in here I have some issues so after I have my foundation I just go ahead and blend it out and that's all you need to do the key here in this video is using the techniques that best fits your skin type the techniques and the products okay and just making sure of the amount of product that you use you want to keep that to a minimum after you have everything all applied and blended out you can use a setting spray I have a, uh, a hydrating setting spray or you can use a matting setting spray uh, you can use a matting setting spray like this there's so many setting sprays <laughs> that you can use but I really didn't want to focus in a lot on that but yeah I just wanted to focus in on how to contour how to conceal and how to get that chiseled uh, uh, facelift uh, effect without actually going under the knife <laughs> so to speak so anyway that pretty much concludes the video let me know down in the comments what you think if you've tried any of these techniques if you found any of it helpful I'd love it if you subscribed thank you so much for tuning in and until my next video smooches